Hello friends. On today's session, we'll be discussing about subgaleal hemorrhage. Okay. So as you all know, there are three types of extracranial hemorrhage that causes birth injury. One is caput succedaneum, other one is cephalhematoma, and this is the third type, subgaleal hemorrhage. Now coming to the definition, it is nothing but hemorrhage under the aponeurysis of the scalp. So there are various layers of the scalp and accumulation of blood in the sub aponeuritic space that is under the aponeurysis. So accumulation of blood under the sub, sub sorry under the aponeurysis or in the sub aponeuritic layer of the scalp is called as subgaleal hemorrhage and when it is seen it is usually seen after instrumental delivery either forceps or vacuum assisted delivery. Next is what is the importance of this and why it should be why it should be uh, detected earlier and what is why it should be monitored vigorously is because this whole space what we see this whole sub space is a very large space anteriorly it extends up to the orbital ridges posteriorly it extends up to the nape of neck and laterally it extends up to the ear so it basically expands throughout the skull space correct so when it expands throughout this huge space it can accumulate as much as 400 ml of blood in this space and obviously if there is this much amount of bleed in a neonate or in a newborn that newborn will end up in some amount of hypovolemia and shock correct so that is the need to recognize it and to monitor that child vigorously okay now so one centimeter increase in head circumference will lead to 30 to 40 ml of blood that can accumulate fine so hence the hemorrhage can spread across the entire skull as mentioned earlier now how it can be palpated it can be palpated as a firm or fluctuant mass with poorly defined edges uh, couldn't capture the image of this because basically the whole of the skull it is a diffuse swelling so it is very difficult to capture but it is usually palpated it can be palpated as a fluctuant boggy swelling with poorly defined edges now how does the child present the child due to that huge amount of blood loss child can even present as pallor when there is blood loss there will be rbc breakdown so eventually the child might end up with nnhp hyperbilirubinemia and it can be palpated as a fluctuant swelling now the course of this fluctuant swelling is it is either gradually progressive so that is when we need to do daily head circumference monitoring so this gradually progressive swelling what happens is slowly progressive swelling leads to displacement of the ears anteriorly and as it can extend up to the supraorbital ridges there can be periorbital swelling also or on the other hand it can end up with rapid increase in head circumference presenting as shock fine that will so the blood that gets accumulated finally resolves slowly and swelling gradually resolves fine so it is a gradual and slow process because the child might end up with rapid increase in head circumference due to a huge amount of blood loss and the child can go into shock and hypovolemia if not monitored properly the mortality rate is as high as 12 to 14 percent and it is mainly because of coagulopathy and hypovolemic shock coming to the treatment there is no specific treatment as such it is just conservative management the baby needs to be monitored in an intensive care setup with daily head circumference monitoring phototherapy as needed for nnhb watch for signs of shock and hypovolemia and treat it appropriately with blood transfusion and fluid as needed ultrasound can help to quantify the amount of bleed and can help us to see the progression of the disease and the last result might be surgical drainage if there is unremitting clinical deterioration so that's it